Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk about the official Dungeons and Dragons Whiz Kids um, Gargantuan Red Dragon that is coming out, and its price point. It is going to be four hundred dollars. It is the um, most expensive uh, miniature that has ever been announced officially attached to Dungeons and Dragons, and it made international news uh, frequently now Dungeons and Dragons makes international news it's listed in hundreds of different news sites Forbes does a bunch of coverage now on on Dungeons and Dragons and um, but this uh, so one it's whiz kids two it's official Dungeons and Dragons um, and it's the highest price point for any miniature ever made for a single miniature that is made for scale, that is attached to a recognizable um, tabletop role-playing game. And I and so there, there's a lot here. Let, let's, let's just start ticking it off. One, Dungeons and Dragons, right? So I think you can command these kind of prices because Dungeons and Dragons, you know, brings everybody to the yard with the milkshake, right? Like, uh, <laughs> um, when it comes to tabletop role-playing games, Dungeons and Dragons simply allows... Um, achievements to be accomplished that no other game does, right? And so, and this is being seen very clearly. No, uh, no other, uh, done, no other game has, you know, the, has hundred dollar drop, hundred dollar drop, hundred dollar drop, uh, three hundred dollar drop, four hundred dollar drop, right? Like, there's just no other tabletop role playing game that can allow a company to print these at mass because if you print a Dungeons and Dragons a miniature like this and it's official and attached to the game an actual like oh hey I know what this monster is it's in the monster manual right and like the fact that Dungeons and Dragons you know when you say okay this is a gargantuan red dragon everybody knows what that means because you know it's Dungeons and Dragons is a standard so one this price point is being driven by its Dungeons and Dragons root and and that's important, okay? Two, uh, this puts some truth to a few lies, right? So one, people have been complaining, you know, people complain about books, I don't have room, right? So there's been, this been, you know, I think a lot of people have been freeing themselves from print books for a while and saying, oh, I can just get this as PDF, or I don't need to buy this book, right? Or I can get a PDF from maybe a shady source because I just don't have the room. But if that's true, how do we have people, you know, um, building these absolutely massive, quite literally, miniature collections? It's just really bizarre, right? And so the reality is, I think it's an excuse that um, some people are tr are going over to digital, right? And I, I and I think there's a sad story there too, because I I don't think everybody who everybody who has a digital copy of the you know of the monster manual. That ain't all coming from D&D Beyond, right? And that, that's a little sad. I don't do that. I do not... Uh, I'm not comfortable with that. And, and you know, and I think it's a, it's, it's a touchy subject because... But I, I think, you know, I, I buy my books now, right? I, I just... I buy my books and I pay so that the creators are rewarded, right? And so that Wizards of Coast is rewarded because they're making it, right? But... Um, so you have this four hundred dollar mini, and this is a big freaking deal. Like, so you have people willing to drop four hundred dollars for a single miniature, right? And the miniature is gorgeous. It's and it's fully, of course, at that price point, it's pre-painted, right? So, so this is a big thing. The other thing I think this is all right. So I say things, and people are like, "No, no, Scott, that's not true," right? First, and and you know, you got to spend five minutes, and you'll find somebody in the comments saying, "Where's your Where's your data points, Scott?" Blah, blah, blah. Right, and, and I'm like, you know, if you've been listening here, we're in a post data world. We know companies are keeping more and more data to themselves, right? We have more ability to get hard numbers than ever before, and there are less hard numbers than ever before. There, I read an article this week that a major government institution had a ton of information that they just did not release because it didn't help the narrative, you know? Like, 
we and we are in a point where like nobody's running reports because what's the point of of gathering data and putting out a report all that's going to happen is the people who agree with what the report says are going to clap and the people who don't agree with the report are going to all this is biased right so so companies are incented increasingly to give absolutely no truth, right? Like, and to just keep their mouth shut and keep all the information to themselves because in today's world, data is power, right? But I'll tell you right now, this, the fact that the, that the price points on these, on these dragons, on these Dungeons and Dragons dragons, right? And these Dungeons and Dragons dungeons that just continue to go through the roof. I, I'm going to cite this as a point of evidence. I'm not telling you it's proven yet, but I'm going to continue to point to you to evidence when we see evidence. What's the evidence here? Ain't nobody poor playing D&D. <laughs> All right, so of course there are exceptions. At the macro level, at the 51% level, it's what I've been telling you. D&D players, D&D dungeon masters are earners, right? They got money coming out their ears. There's a lot of money attached to them to dragons. And there is a, a centrifugal force be, before this. If you read 750 pages to learn to do a thing, right, for fun, you aren't going to remain poor. Like, that is, the, that is not the model for poor. It just, it isn't, right? Like, so, the, you know, you're like, oh, gee, you know, that was interesting. I read those 750 pages. Uh, maybe I should go read uh, all of the... Um, all the setting books. That's another thousand pages. Maybe I should read uh, maybe four adventures out of the twenty that are out. Oh, that's another thousand pages. Like D and D. Like if you read like, routinely, Dungeon Masters are reading a thousand to three thousand. To if you read everything right now, if you read everything that's canon for just for the latest version five e, you're reading seven thousand pages of content, and there are people who have done it. I've read half of them. I've read half of them cover to cover, right? So I'm well over 3,000 pages just on this version, right? So, and this is important, like, and the reason why is I keep saying you do not remain unchanged once you attach yourself to Dungeons and Dragons, right? Now, there are some poor Dungeons and Dragons players, right? But at the, and be, just, there's exceptions everywhere, right? I don't care about exceptions. I care about patterns, right? And I think, and I, I truly believe, right? Dun Dungeons and Dragons wasn't built to make rich people, right? But that is one of the things it does, right? If you, you know, when I was, you know, I, I just fell in love with Dungeons and Dragons in 1982 and just began reading like crazy. And the other thing I think that done, that one of the reasons why so many Dungeons and Dragons players are ridiculously rich, right? And, and, and the trend only grows, right? And by the way, this is one of the other things is, that's a tag is physical product, right? Like if you got players and they don't own physical books and they're not building physical miniatures, yeah, you might, this digital sucks. It's like, it, it's the new, like we learned it from March, 2020. Right, like there's not a parent in America that's like it. Wow, I really like these, you know, this digital education experience for my kid. Said no one ever in America, right? For the, the digital, like the analog is a tag, and a collect. It's a ta it's a quality tag, right? The analog, the 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 physical books. The people who are buying these books, Wizards of the Coast has it all wrong. Right, the list of people who are playing Dungeons and Dragons is worth more than the money they're getting for the books. Right, every major company in the world is learning this right now. You know what a data lake is? I do. Right, like, you know, and so I really think we need to understand that the the monetary model around Dungeons and Dragons is incredibly complicated. People keep thinking. It's this simple thing, like they print a book and they sell a book, and it's just so much more complex than that. And the reality is, the list, the Dungeons and Dragons list, is a Venn diagram of power in American society, power and wealth and confidence and charisma and change, right? And everybody's like, oh, I don't know about that, Scott. Like this is forty-seven years, we're forty-eight years in. This is new. This is infancy, 
right? And there are patterns that people aren't seeing. And I think that the red dragon is proof that at the macro level, D&D players, D&D dungeon masters are freaking earners, right? And like they just, they get bank. And, you know, and the reality is, you know, um, I'm not a strong proof of this. Right? I got four kids, so my money just flows out. <laughs> you know, there's no proof I'm rich, right? But, but, but even the fact that I have four kids, maybe isn't that like a clue that I, you know, I ain't poor. Like, so you know, it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. So that's my biggest takeaway from the Guardian and Red Dragons, Dungeon Masters be earners, and there's there's even more important things in that pattern, right? That's my opinion. What do you think? Am I wrong? Are all your players poor? Like, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the uh, in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.